You can use keying tools in Fusion not only for blue screen and green screen, but you can use it for pretty much arbitrary color selections. For example, I can build a key that selects a desaturated orange or a key that selects a mid-gray tone. Basically, whenever I have in an image a good separation of two objects that I can see and that is somehow uniform, chances are I can find a keying solution that can select that separation so I can automatically build myself a mask for this separation. If you are familiar with the color page in DaVinci Resolve, you may have come across the HSL qualifier tool in the color page. Uh, that is a keyer that keys on hue, saturation and luminance. And that's very popular in color grading because you can do these uh, secondary adjustments, these um, selective grading on certain colors, basically color ranges, hue, saturation, etc. And the same can be done in Fusion. You can use it for color corrections or you can use it to actually extract objects and do your compositing tasks on them. So this is what I want to show you. Let's dive in. I have assembled this little baby toy scene here just to have as many different colors and shades and so on as possible. And if you like, feel free to download this clip or use your own footage to play around and test the different tools. First thing I want to do, I want to hook up an ordinary keying tool meant for green screen and blue screen and see what selections I can get from that. First tool, the Delta keyer. Let me bring in the Delta keyer, Control Spacebar Delta keyer, hook it up and I bring in the alpha channel directly and now I can make some color selections here, right? The delta key is meant for green screen and blue screen but you can select any background color you want. For example, I could select red here and make a selection on, on red like this. Um, now I am selecting background so whatever I'm selecting will become transparent. If you want the opposite then I just need to invert the mask at the end so I can for example add a bitmap tool um, just to get uh, just a mask channel out of this. So the bitmap tool just takes the alpha channel out, makes a mask channel out of it, and if you want you can uh, invert, and then you get the invert. Now you see there's red uh, in even inside brown and in other components, so it's not a, a super clean selection. Let me try blue instead, maybe we have more luck on, on blue here. So blue gives a pretty good selection, of course there's blue in the uh, blanket underneath and even though it looks a bit different here, this looks like more saturated, darker than this, but for the Kia it's pretty much the same. And that's a bit of uh, the issue if you want to do these kind of selections. Let me try the duck here and just select yellow. Uh, it looks yellow, actually it's more like orange. Um, and what are we getting? Well, we are getting the duck including the feet, so between this orange and this darker orange, there's no difference whatsoever in the alpha channel. And if you look around, even red here and the yellow stripes here and so on, all fall into the range of the Kia. So for the Kia, this orange here has, uh, or yellow orange, whatever, has a, a dominant red component and when the delta key, it's a color difference key, so by default it compares the color difference between the background channel and the other, so for green it looks at the green channel, compares with red and blue, and here uh, red is the dominant part, so even other objects that look quite different but have a strong red component fall into the key. So that's a bit the issue with the delta key here. Um, so let me go away from this standard keying tool and try a color keyer or chroma keyer next. So bring it down and control space bar chroma keyer. Hook it up and the keyer here has certain ranges and a selection of the key type. If you choose color then these are the RGB channels and there's luminance calculated separately and basically it restricts the colors in the, let me bring it in, it restricts the colors that are coming into the mask just with low and high values and that's it. So basically everything that falls into this range is turned transparent, everything outside of this range is turned solid. And this is completely like a 
hard edge, right? So there is a soft range here, so you can uh, soften this, these uh, clip off areas, so to, to taper them off to the sides. Uh, but by default, these are hard ranges. And if you choose chroma, then um, R, G, and B, red, green, blue, already uh, have removed the luminance. So this is like the chrominance of red and of green and of blue. So the luminance is separated from these channels and taken into this separate slider. So this slider you can pretty much ignore if you use color. If you use chroma, it's separated out, which often can give a better result, but it's pretty similar. So you can just try both. And if I now select my, my duck here, you see I'm getting a pretty good selection. Now, of course, I'm getting parts of the feet here, which makes sense because, you know, there's like also darker orange tones here. So if I select this part, definitely I will get um, some orange, brighter orange parts from, from the feet. Um, but all in all, you can add to this selection. And if I want the inverse, I can again add a bitmap tool or I can just go here into this matte control here, this matte tool and click invert matte. So the delta key doesn't have this invert, but the chroma key does. So here I can directly invert. And let's see the red head here from our Paddington toy. Uh, this one is, well, I, I get a little bit like of the outside edge, the orange here, um, but otherwise I'm getting, uh, I'm not selecting red. So this time I'm actually selecting orange and selecting orange and selecting red are actually two different things for the chroma key. So it can get these kind of sharper selections towards uh, nearby colors that the normal delta key and the normal green screen, blue screen keying tools uh, typically do not consider. So that's where the chroma key can come in. Especially in combination with the luminance, you might also use it not only to separate specific colors, but perhaps also the lack of a color. So let me look at this sheep, for example. So if I want to use the chroma key to select the sheep, let's see if that works. So first, let me go back here to the, and reset the ranges, reset to default. And now I just select here areas of the sheep. And you see, I'm getting a pretty good mask. Now again, it's pretty hard edged. So that's maybe uh, too hard here. Uh, but the selection between the sheep and the different background objects is astonishingly good. So again, edges I might have to work on, but I am not getting any of the colors around. So this time I'm selecting presumably on something like yellowish beige here uh, in the color, but I'm also selecting on the luminance and everything outside has all kinds of fancy colors and uh, different luminance and so on. So this way I'm, I'm able to getting a, a hard mask, uh, which, which pretty well separates the sheep from the rest. There are limitations to this chroma key and let's see if we can find one. Let me try to select this monkey or maybe not the whole monkey because you know it has white and so on. Let me try to get the, the brown outside fur of this monkey so that I can get maybe an outside edge and then you know you could add garbage masks and solid masks and you can you know do all kinds of stuff but let me try to get this outside edge here with a keying solution. Let me reset again and select here parts of the, the fur. And let me also add some of the brighter areas here. I'm just selecting a bit all around. Where is it? Here it is. Hmm, so here it looks pretty good, but I have a problem here. So I am not getting any separation at all here. Now, why is this? This looks quite different, right? It looks even like a different color. This is like brown, purple, um, but actually it is not. Uh, the problem here is that it looks different, but is this really a difference in the chrominance, a difference in the luminance, or maybe just a difference in saturation? Let me show you what I mean. I will just attach a simple brightness and contrast node into my, to my main uh, media in, and let me bring the saturation up and show you something. So if I bring the saturation up and make everything oversaturated, you see that this color is actually the same as this if I just push the saturation to the limit. So I don't have a difference in uh, chrominance. The difference is just the saturation. So if I want to extract this, maybe it would be good to 
key actually on the saturation, which is the main difference in this case. So luminance is a difference. So this one is also darker than here, but I also have difference in luminance across this uh, brown edge here. So here I have much brighter area than, than here. So luminance varies, but the saturation would be something which could be really helpful. And I can do different things. First of all, I can use a keyer on saturation only. And the keying tool is ironically the luma keyer. So let me bring in a luma keyer. Luma keyer. The luma keyer, it's called luma keyer. Actually, it should be called channel keyer because that's what it does. Let me go back to the default view here. What it does, it takes any channel. You can use even red, green, blue, or luminance, saturation, hue. Now, depth we don't have here, but let's say I take saturation, then it calculates a saturation channel. So it calculates the saturation pixel by pixel and just outputs it. That's it. Uh, and afterwards, you can just um, use the black and white point to uh, crank it up to, to build a, a hard mask. So this is just a saturation image. It's not really a, any form of keying. It just calculated the saturation. That's it. And then I have these matte refinement tools to bring that saturation towards a solid uh, mask. So I can uh, bring this up. And you see, if I, if I bring the black value up, I can get a pretty clean edge here uh, on, on this side. So I, I don't have the issue that we just had in the previous solution. And of course, I can bring the white also down and I get a pretty good mask. Uh, I get a pretty good mask here, but a bad one here. So only saturation is not the solution. So here, these are both saturated. Here I have a saturated brown and saturated yellow. Um, and saturation alone just doesn't work for this. However, this difference I might find on a different channel. So if I might find this difference, for example, in hue. Uh, maybe not, sorry. Hue, luminance, luminance. So this is darker than this. So in the luminance, I do see a contrast here. So the goal is to combine these different approaches into one key. I can now use different luma keys, try the different channels, and manually combine them. That would be one option. So combine the masks, like take the minimum of the masks or maximum of the masks, something like this. Um, that definitely leads to a solution. Or I can use a keying tool in a different color space. And that is the solution that I want to show you. Nobody tells me that I always have to work on an RGB image. So what I will do now, I will do a color space transformation and the tool control space bar color space color space here it is color space is the name of the tool let me connect this and this tool does a conversion from an rgb image to a different color space so if i say here to color i'm converting to a different color and here i can select different spaces hue saturation value with these yuv video spaces and so on i now want HLS, Hue, Luminance, Saturation. So I do this transformation and I get some very strange looking image uh, because now in the red channel I have Hue, in the green channel I have now Luminance, and in the blue channel I have Saturation. And looking at this in an RGB viewer uh, is not very intuitive, but I don't need to look at it. I want to key on it. So what I will do is I will add a color or chroma key and let me just attach this here, set it. This time I set it to color because I actually want to work on these individual channels, which now are hue, luminance, saturation. Was that right? HLS, hue, luminance, saturation. And I want to restrict each of these channels to build my mask. Let me bring it into the alpha channel on the right side. And now, sorry, click by accident. And now I will restrict this and I will just select in this image. I select here in this false color image. And oops, that was too much. Just the, the brown monkey, which now looks blue here for, because of the color transformation. I can also select here. And I can clean this up further. Okay, I, I don't overdo it, but you see now I'm getting a pretty clean selection on both sides. So I'm getting a pretty clean selection towards 
uh, here towards the area where I had uh, no uh, differentiation in, in hue but only in uh, saturation but I'm also getting a clean um, edge here where my difference was in the um, luminance. So by using all these three channels I can can combine this and I have built myself a hue luminance saturation Kia. I actually don't need this luminance slider here by the way you can it won't have any impact if I just remove this. So this would be an additional restriction but now luminance would be calculated on uh, HLS which doesn't make sense so just set this, reset this, ignore this and these three sliders give me um, the, the channel selection. Again there's a soft range and you know we can refine this and spend the next 30 minutes of refining this and make a wonderful mask. Maybe I just uh, do a very quick um, rough mask around just to get rid of this garbage and also I need to invert it first that, let in me invert it so I select the brown fur and now a very um, quick polygon mask should already do the job you know just roughly to get rid of all the stuff outside. I can just mask it off and um, let me, I can, I can just multiply by this mask so different ways to apply these masks. So here I've just masked off the uh, correction, multiplied it to get everything outside black and I have only my fur. So if I now want to apply this, let's say I want to do some fancy color correction on the fur, I could use a color corrector somewhere, attach the mask and attach the original image like, like this. Let me make some space. So and here is now my uh, color correction. Let me bring it in on the right side and now I can, you know, darken the fur for example gain, gamma, whatever, or turn it, turn it blue. Okay, so now I have a blue monkey. A blue monkey, that's what I always wanted. Now I can spend the next 30 minutes of refining this blue monkey, but that won't really lead anywhere. The point is to show you some different ways of getting selections that may not be obvious. So I hope that helps. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, click like and subscribe if you feel like it and see you next time. My name is Bernd. Thanks for watching. Bye.